thank you for uh, agreeing for the interview. Very happy to have you. If you could first just uh, introduce yourselves and the band a little bit. Hi, right. thank you for the invite. Uh, we're a band called Morphide. He's Chris. Hello. I'm Liz or Asa, whatever people enjoy more. <laughs> That's up to you. <laughs> and we're a feeble fronted progressive metal slash alternative metal band. Uh, currently, we're situated in Denmark, Copenhagen. Um, yeah, basically writing our original songs and doing sometimes some of the covers. Yeah, I guess it all started some time ago. We started to make some covers, cover songs, and it slowly progressed into writing our own original material. And yeah, something like that in short. <laughs> so uh, I know that you are a duo, um, but you also have, uh, I suppose, some friendly musicians who play with you when you're out on the road as well. Yeah. That, yes. That's true. We're kind of a composer's duo, let's call us ourselves, like that. So we mainly write the music and we uh, make those decisions, how we want the, our songs to sound. Uh, but we're very lucky to have a really good uh, friends, musicians, who helped us out with our tour and with our shows. And they've been with us on our road and uh, they were really awesome. <laughs> Is touring and playing live something you really enjoy doing? Uh, yes, yeah. very much. And I think that's like, when you try it for one time, this is like a drug you just can't stop. You need yeah. more and more of it. So <laughs> we expected we will like it, but when we actually tried, we can say for sure this is really good. This is yeah. an awesome feeling. <laughs> this is uh, like a big adventure. And I mean, I really can say that you can have some sort of as work attitude to it, like as if it is work. It's much more as a never-ending party <laughs> <laughs> that you anyway do your uh, favorite stuff on the road and you play music. I mean, what else can you want? <laughs> well, uh, I guess let's start talking about the original music that you have out there right now. Um, am I correct? There are two, uh, two songs you have out at the moment? Yes. 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 Uh, so... I haven't done a video yet talking about them, so I want to talk about them right here. Um, Enter the Storm is the first one that I have here. Um, and I think it's very melodic. Um, I like the, the soaring kind of vocals. Uh, it's just a very solid song. Was this the first one of the two that you wrote or the second? Oof. No, this is a tricky because uh, we are releasing songs not in the way they are recorded or they were composed. Yeah. Uh, I would say that actually we wrote Enter the Storm before uh, the yeah, making. Yeah, I would say. Uh, it's older a and lot it was. Before. <laughs> yes. Uh, we released it second though, uh, but we wrote it first. Uh, and. Uh, we wrote it really fast. It was basically two days and it was just completely like 95% done. So it was very uh, inspired by, I don't know what exactly, but it yeah. was like, there was huge inspiration, which actually doesn't happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> We're more like, uh, we need to work. <laughs> so there's no such thing as inspiration. We have to do stuff, but it was really like a something leading and it was yeah. very... At least we have definitely composed the, the whole structure of that. And, and, yeah. and then... Uh... After some time, we just uh, let it go down and maybe uh, sit in our heads, and then we started to fill up, fill it up with some uh, little things here and there. Uh, but the structure itself, yeah, it was written really fast. Yeah. <laughs> Surprisingly, I would say in our case. Uh, so yeah. is that uh, is that different from how you wrote Mayhem? Yes. Way different. Mayhem is, I think, a bit of a Frankenstein because we had lots, lots of pieces, which we just, at some po some moment, we just started putting like here and there, changing yeah. their places. Like, what if we do like that? Maybe we should try like that. So it was more like a, um, we tried to catch that feel. With Enter yeah. the Storm, somehow that feel was already there. We just knew what we were supposed to do. But with Mayhem, it was more like an experiment. Like, how do we should do it correctly? Should we try it like that? So it was more of a more of a different approach. Like we need to do it as yeah. <laughs> we usually have. Um, I will also say that um, "Enter the Storm" is much more a common song to us to to write. I mean, uh, 
I would say for us it's a little bit easier to write melodic songs than heavy songs. Uh, so for us it was actually some sort of experiment to actually try to write one. Uh, so it really took some time to actually polish those riffs and maybe find parts that we'll like and how they're gonna play together. So yeah, it definitely took way longer time to, to make it. Yeah. Uh, but when we finished, we decided that it should be the first single we released because <laughs> somehow it ended up having everything we could, like clean vocals, extreme vocals, melodic yeah. parts, heavy parts, riffs, I don't know, chords, whatever. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty bad. That's, that's so funny. That is exactly pretty much what I wrote down in my notes. <laughs> uh, and that I love the song. It's my favorite song of the two, Mayhem. Um, and I wrote down, you know, clean, uh, kind of atmospheric guitar. Uh, and then you've got the harder sound in the chorus. Uh, the vocals are so wide ranging. You've got this beauty, this rage, uh, the screams. It's kind of, it is everything, but it sounds like a very complete song, not just like you were trying to cram all these different parts in there. Oh, thank that, you. That's, that's <laughs> that was nice. the goal. <laughs> I, I think the way to actually achieve it probably is just to listen to it quite many times and and try to feel the song and understand if it actually kind of flows. I mean, does it sound logical? I mean, and I think you can understand it just listening to it a couple of times. Yeah, not like your own song, but just like a song you would like to listen to. So yeah, we, we try to kind of get that look from the sides. Even though it was our song. It, it is pretty biased anyway, but I think you yeah. still should try to do it at least. <laughs> I, I like that approach. I, I mean, if it's something that you wouldn't listen to, why are you recording it, right? That's, that makes that's true. <laughs> um, so you have a, a video, or you have two videos, right? Uh, do you enjoy making the videos too? How does that? Uh, Ooh. Does that make... <laughs> that's a very good question yeah it's at Perfect. the same time i think it's so much fun and it's really cool and it's amazing experience i mean for enter the storm we were driving like 200 kilometers to south of denmark and staying by an overnight there to see that huge cliff and stuff so it's like huge experience really nice at the same time it's so complicated and hard <laughs> and you get so tired because you don't get enough sleep and you have to like do this pre-production step where you basically write everything down. So I would say I like thinking about it. <laughs> then I, I there's this week when you're just completely lost from reality. And then I like when we see the music video, I'm like, oh yeah, it's nice. <laughs> it yeah. was worth it. <laughs> yeah, I also think that uh, since we're trying to make, we're trying to make them quite budget. Uh, <laughs> and um, yeah, that limits quite a lot. However, then when you are making it, you still want to get some, I don't know, joy from it, some satisfaction, satisfaction that it's get, turning out quite well. And when it does, I think it's a, it's a nice feeling yeah. that, oh, actually, I put this time into something that's turning out quite well, and you have this satisfaction. But when it, you're like... Uh... When, when he's lying in the cold sea, freezing there, <laughs> and we're filming him from all sides, I don't think he was actually really satisfied at that moment. But... <laughs> I mean, yeah, it, it really depends how it turns out. But mostly, I think it's... I think the best part about it is still creative. I mean, music is creative. Videos are creative as well. From our side, what we try to do is uh, we're trying to put a plot in the music video. So as probably you can see, both Mayhem and uh, Enter the Storm, they don't have musicians playing. Yeah. So we just have only the plot, which many people find weird. But uh, for some reason, we, we stick to it by now. And this is also really satisfaction part, satisfactory part, when you just you have some kind of idea about how you want to see music video, what is going to be and not, like about can people understand your idea? And when people write like, oh yeah, I, I really like, like for example, Mayhem, we had lots of people who were actually writing like, oh wow, I can relate. Or that's what, like this music video made us think about some stuff and we're like, oh wow, yeah. <laughs> that's so cool. Even though that we can see that, well, it's definitely definitely not the Hollywood quality and all oh, that, yeah. but I mean- We're still, very it's... realistic about the quality. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, but- well, still... I... 
I have seen a lot of videos, and I can tell you that I have seen a lot worse. I think <laughs> I don't think they look low budget or uh, cheaply made. I think you did a really nice job um, okay. on whatever budget. You <laughs> um, okay, so let's now talk about some of the covers that you've put videos out for, and I'm sure that you have done. Uh, many more covers that you don't have videos for. But I'll tell you that my favorites, um, I love Open Your Eyes. I loved Guano Apes from way back when that album came out, Proud Like a God. I love Sandra's voice. Uh, and I think uh, you did just a, a really fantastic job with that song. You added even a little bit more um, grit to the singing, I think. Uh, and you really nailed the part, you know, open your eyes, that part. Um, you really uh, did a nice job. I love that one. I love the Ginger cover. Of course, I'm a big Ginger <laughs> fan. Um, and uh, also the Evanescence cover. Oh. And for me, when I compare those three songs, those three vocalists are so different, each one of them and what they do. But you seem to be able to... Uh, kind of fit in and do all of those parts. So um, nicely done there. Talk about doing some of those. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, first of all, all of those covers actually started as a practice. So it was, uh, we, we, we wanted to try out like, how do you record a song? How do you sync correctly to a microphone? How do you mix this stuff? And we started doing those covers like long time ago. I think it's five years ago almost five years Roughly, ago yeah. and our first covers were uh pretty bad <laughs> so like at first first time you try something it's it's not necessarily good it's just experience yeah. so uh we started doing them again and again and again and then when i tried to get this uh extreme vocals as well like uh, there right, was the right. first right. first of those three is evanescence cover so it was more like a clean vocals and it was something I was more confident in for a long time because I'm actually more like a, like clean vocals uh, are my, I would say, main. yeah, my main vocals, which I've been doing for a longer time. So I was pretty confident there and I really like Evanescence, like from childhood, I had this Fallen album, I was nine, I was like, yes. <laughs> so I really liked this song and it hit me like very hard and I really tried to do that one. Um, and it was era when we did acoustic covers. Then the Guana Apes is next, I think, which I did. And it was actually a really tricky cover. I rewrote it completely four times. I was always completely dissatisfied because I also really like her voice. Sandra is amazing. And I really didn't want to screw this song. That, that was something I didn't want to do. So I had to re-record it and re-record it again and re-record it again. And then last time when I was like, I was so frustrated that I can't do it. I was like, okay, I can't do it. And I just went and did it like like it ended up in the cover and like wow <laughs> so i don't know what happened but maybe because i've been I, I think it took me one month to record then listen to it re-record listen to it and i think that it cover actually helped me also very much in you know like uh, nailing like this technique and learning how sandra sings and uh, understanding her techniques so i'm actually also quite satisfied with this one <laughs> So I'm really glad it sounds good and uh, and you enjoyed it. That, that's really nice. And of course, the ginger, very tricky cover because Tati's voice is something absolutely unbelievable. When I, when I started, uh, I decided I want to do ginger. I was like, what am I even doing? <laughs> like, why, why am I spending time on that? I, I, I was like, no, I, I just can't do it. But I want to just... As you said, there are so many covers which we recorded, but we don't have music video or we never released, actually. So I was like, maybe it's going to be one of those covers. I don't know. But somehow, I, when I started doing this cover, I, st I was really listening to every single, like, not even word, but like sound she was doing. And the more I was listening, the more I was, I was excited about it because I never, I was never singing like that. And I was like, wow, she's putting so much details and nuances and I was completely like into it. I, I spent so much time just listening to her, like trying to copy that. And then at some, at some point I was like, maybe actually we're going to release it. <laughs> and then he was supposed to do a mixing for, for his cover. And I think he was hating me for that. Not really. <laughs> I mean, I was hating you sometime back 
when it took so much time to actually put it all together and glue it. <laughs> but yeah, <laughs> but he's, think... he's the main, how to say... Um, yeah, mixing engineer. No, I would power. say the main guy who who has this last word, either we release cover or not. So I record it and then I give it to him and like... I decided <laughs> if I can pull it off. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> if that's gonna sound good. And he said that like, it's actually really good. So, and I was so shocked. And when we released it, I was, I don't know, I was uh, pretty scared because honestly, come on, making cover of Ginger. Was that the first time you really tried a song with that growl, or have you played around with that a little bit? Mm, no, I was, I was, I was more into the Sandra's technique, you know, I mean, this grit and these harsh, raspy vocals, uh, more like a hailstorm stuff. But then I was like, I, I was trying to do some screams and stuff, but I would never try to do low growls or you know these powerful tatty screams. So it was actually a debut. That's why I was even so like scared because it's something I'm not very confident in. And like uh, I know Ginger is a band that is very loved by people. So again, messing up with this cover and uh, making it bad would be a huge shame for me. <laughs> um, do you any secrets you can give away? Any cover you're planning on releasing next? Any thoughts? Yes, I think the next cover actually maybe it's either going to be Ginger again, but some of their older stuff, where she has more of this like raspy grit stuff, uh, or it's going to be something from North Lane, uh, because we've been recently to their show and I got super inspired again. <laughs> so I don't know what to choose, but I actually think it's going to be uh, Ginger. Okay. And then North Lane, <laughs> probably. <laughs> Well, um, speaking of inspiration, uh, what are, are some of your other musical influences and um, and what do you like to listen to right now? Oh, there are so many, too many, I guess. Yeah. We, we can talk hours about it. I mean, probably as every musician. <laughs> but I think our for a long time, our main like a trio inspiration was uh, Tool Carnival Tesseract. They were all very nice bands. Yeah, I think that's how maybe Enter the Storm got born. Yes, probably. it was a mixture of a, a bit Carnival, a bit Tesseract with this flow. And I would say this was for a long time our core, like of all our um, influences. And then it started, we started digging into it more and more and finding... Uh, so many nice bands. I mean, yeah. amazing guys. It's just... Uh, yeah, great. North Lane, Ginger... Um, Spirit, Spirit Box. Box. Um, um, from instrumental guys, Pliny, David Maxim, Michik, um, Mich 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 I don't remember how These to guys from Germany, Unprocessed. Uh, un unprocessed. Um, um, what else? Many. Catatonia, probably. Yeah. Well, they are not our main inspiration, but, but still amazing. They're guys. really good, anyways. Yeah. And we're probably forgetting much, much more. Yeah. <laughs> But, but, but I would for, say that for now, I, I would say we're really digging into North Lane and Spirit Box. Yes. I would say that's the two main bands where we're super hyped about it. I mean, uh, Spirit Box more on the progressive side. Yeah, this is, I would say Spirit Box is a concept of a perfect female fronted progressive metal band to me. Like, if we, of course, if we don't count Ginger, but I mean, from perspective of uh, songwriting. Maybe, yeah, songwriting, uh, like, we think Spirit Box is something. Unique, absolutely, yeah. And North Lane, they are just so good and hardworking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, something like that, I would say. <laughs> um, okay, so I guess kind of just to finish up here, what what else is next? What's coming um, musically or in terms of a tour or more shows, anything like that? There's a... Quite a few things going on right now. Uh, we really wanted to release something this year, but um, that didn't happen. But that doesn't mean uh, we will not release it anyways. We have a third music video in production. So we already have a song ready and we already have music video filmed. We just need to set it up, finish. Um, that was a music video we've been filming uh, with a huge 
crew. So there were like 20 people from five different countries involved. So this is something we were really excited about. And uh, we really hope that we're going to release it in the beginning of 2020. So maybe January, I would say. I hope so. At least this is our goal. The January, this is our goal. Yes. Then we are also, we are really lucky. We had a camera guy with us on tour. Uh, from uh, another band site from Ravdina, they brought their camera guy and he actually filmed some, uh, some of her performances. And I think we're gonna release one more music video, but more like a tour music video on with one more song. So this is coming. Yeah. In terms of shows and tours, uh, what we came up with is uh, we concluded that we need, it was really cool and we really liked it and we think we did a really good job for the first time. But we realized that we want to do much, much better. So we decided that we will skip this um, spring tour, like uh, bands usually do, like spring autumn. We decided to skip the spring tour and maybe we're going to be ready for uh, next autumn to go yes. somewhere. But we really want to, you know, set the quality much higher and uh, somehow, I don't know, just improve as a band. So. So these are the plans. So we have <laughs> lots of new music coming, some covers, and hopefully shows in the end of 2020. Yes, a lot of work. <laughs> well, well I'm very well. excited. For, yes, I'm very excited as well. I can't wait to hear some new music. And I am uh, very, very thankful that you sat down to talk to me today. I'm going to leave all of the links in my video here so people can find your music and listen to it. and. Uh, maybe buy some of it and check you out. Uh, again, uh, thanks for stopping by, and uh, I will um, be in touch with you folks and uh, following you for what you do in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having us. And <laughs> yes, that was super cool. <laughs> yeah, really, really nice talk. We really enjoyed those. <laughs>